Hummingbirds are some of our favorite animals here at the homestead, but sometimes it's challenging to get them in your garden. So in today's video, Chris is gonna go over some of the absolute best plants to attract hummingbirds. If you're a gardener in the Western Hemisphere, then you have likely seen or heard hummingbirds while working in your garden. Now for me, I normally see hummingbirds a few times a day, um, but every encounter I still find quite special because these little birds are zippy, they're vocal, very curious, and just so beautiful. So if you're like me and you want to build a garden that welcomes and supports these amazing little pollinator birds, then we're gonna go over some great perennials that you can incorporate into your garden really easily so that you can have not only a long stretch of beauty, but also nectar no matter where you garden. Most species of hummingbirds are migratory. So if you live in a Northern climate, you're only gonna see these birds around during the warmer months because they fly south when it gets colder here. But there are some resident hummingbirds like the Anna's hummingbird that likes to fly around my garden year-round. So we're also gonna talk about some plants that you can have in your garden to have a year-round planting. Many of the plants that attract hummingbirds have flowers that are bright and vibrant, usually in the shades of oranges and reds, although they do visit pinks and purples as well. And in terms of the flower shape, they're usually long and tubular, and that allows for the hummingbird's beak to go up and access the nectar. And I actually have a friend who lives close by who has a fantastic garden that features hummingbird plants, and I hear they're currently in bloom, so let's head over there and get some inspiration. This is aloe aristata or the lace aloe. Very beautiful, but the flowers are just finishing up. And that's okay because down here we've got agastache, which has a very similar coloration. So beautiful, it's drought tolerant. Both the bees and the hummingbirds love it. I have a few in my garden and it goes really well with this peachy salvia. We have a cremocarpus or the Chilean glory flower. And these ones are really easy to start from seed. I started them a couple years ago, and this may be one of them. And then let's swing around here, go onto the patio. We've got petunias that are very familiar. Towards the back there, we've got some kufia. And then by the chair, that is albutalon. There's a fuchsia here, I believe. And then those petunias again. There's a really small firecracker plant. And then this one, I have been told, is the place where the hummingbirds really like to hang out, this stunning red salvia. So all of those plants are perennials, but then if we look up here towards the veggie garden, we've got the annual favorite, nasturtium. After taking a look at my friend's garden, I'm feeling really inspired to incorporate more plants into the garden that support these little birds. Anyway, there are a lot of plants here that are hardy to many zones and can be started from seeds. So don't feel disappointed that your nursery doesn't carry some of these plants. Something like this, which is the Bolivian fuchsia. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Um, and I think the fruit is edible too. Um, something like this can be grown from seeds, so it is worth the time researching to see what is suitable for your garden and what could be hardy or just be planted in a container and brought indoors for protection. I actually brought back a few plants from the visit. This one is the Acremocarpus, which is the climber, the Chilean glory flower. And then there's another climber here. This is Ipomoea lobata, or the firecracker vine. So this one, although it's not hardy in my zone 8B, it's a great and really showy climber if you live in a hotter climate. But if you want more options, there's also trumpet vine, honeysuckle, and one of my oddball favorites, mashua, which actually flowers in the winter. I also brought this odd plant home. So this is a cultivar of lion's ear or leonotus, which is in the lamiaceae or mint family. Now in the past, I've grown a species that got to be about six feet tall. This one is clearly something that's a bit more dwarfing, but I know it's going to attract a lot of hummingbirds because it has these long tubular orange flowers and I've seen the hummingbirds visit these plants well into the fall so I've had them flower straight into October before. Where I live most salvias will flower sometime during spring straight through into fall except for this plant. <laughs> it's quite large but I actually grew it from a cutting that I got from my friend that we just visited. This monster of a salvia is salvia generiflora and it's supposed to be a winter flowering salvia so it's quite interesting 
interesting and also quite unique with this one is that it prefers um, a more dappled sunlight as opposed to full sun, which most salvias enjoy. So this one, it's going to be a bit more challenging to coax red flowers out of it during the colder months. But if I can get it to flower, then I know my resident hummingbirds are going to be really happy. If you're looking for a later blooming salvia and don't have space for something like this and you want those red flowers, then salvia elegans or pineapple sage is a wonderful option. So I have it growing in a container and it looks beautiful. It's going to keep blooming straight into fall with those lovely red flowers that are edible and actually the leaves are quite tasty as well. Another stunning mint family plant is agastache or hummingbird mint. So I grew my Agastachio rantiaca, which is orange flowered from seed a few years ago, and it's still my favorite in the garden. And I've been adding other ones with a lot of more peachy colored flowers to my space, including Agastachio rupestris, which has a bit more frilly or finer leaves. And there are so many different ones, different cultivars available through the nurseries um, if you're looking for things with lots and lots of flowers. Now what's great with these plants is that they do well in dry, well-draining soils in full sun, and they're really easy to take care of. Also in the mint family is the genus Stachys, which offers a lot of options. And if your soil is a little bit more moist, then Monardas or bee balms are really showy and very beautiful. They come in different colors and they not only attract hummingbirds, they are adored by bees and butterflies. Other hummingbird magnets that do well in the sun include Crocosmia, all sorts of penstemons. We've got Lobelias, probably Lobelia tupa for the drier soils and Lobelia cardinalis for moist soils. And there's also Cape Fuchsia or Phygelias, which also likes that full sun and moist soil combo. If your garden has some shadier spots, you can still offer some beautiful blooms to the hummingbirds. So one plant that is oftentimes overlooked is toad lily or Tricertus. Now this is a later blooming flower and the flowers are actually quite interesting. They look like tiny orchids, very tropical looking for not so tropical settings. And they do like moist soils. Most of the plants that we talked about are herbaceous perennials, meaning they don't have much woody stuff. So in most climates, they die back at the end of the year and then they come back when it's spring again. But if you're looking for a plant that has a bit more substance, more presence throughout the year, then there are some great flowering shrubs that the hummingbirds really enjoy. This beautiful plant right here is an evergreen shrub called Gravillia. This one specifically is the Royal Gravillia, which flowers with beautiful red flowers during the winter months, but I do have some buds here. So I think the hummingbirds are in for a treat. It's going to flower with a lot of pendulous red flowers very soon. And actually there are a number of winter flowering shrubs that you can incorporate into your garden to add a lot of color and nectar during those colder months when especially northern growers don't really see much going on in the garden. Other great shrub options that also flower throughout the winter include a whole bunch of manzanitas, their relative Arbutus unido, which is called the strawberry tree, and one of my favorite native shrubs, tall Oregon grape, and one of those hybrids related to it, which is Berberus charity, which has these wonderful yellow flowers that actually appear during the dead of winter where I live. Although I personally like to explore the world by growing different plants, I do have a number of native plants that serve not just the hummingbirds, but also the native pollinators uh, just tucked throughout. So in addition to this current, I've got Western Columbine, Pacific Bleeding Heart, Salal, and also Evergreen Huckleberry to add some edible components and some year-round interest. With so many perennial plant options nowadays to add color and nectar to your garden, I highly encourage you to explore some longer-lived options to really easily and naturally support your hummingbird friends. One of my recommendations would be hollyhock. It worked really well for bringing in actually all three species of hummingbirds that exist here in San Diego. So hopefully you got a suggestion from this video. Good luck in the garden, subscribe, and keep on growing.